Well, I'm getting my photograph already. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Pugin Centre. Or for those that have visited us before, they know that this is our second home. For those that work on the project, I think we live here in sleeping bags. <laughs> Um, we very much hope that you're going to enjoy the grand tour. This is the first time that we've been able to spread it out leisurely when we can all enjoy looking at all four of the major buildings that Pugin produced here in North Staffordshire in Pugin land. So first of all, just to welcome you, a couple of housekeeping things. If you haven't found the toilets already, it's just through the door here. Um, the steam coffee, which is on tap as it were in the back room. Um, it looks like the weather's going to hold for us all of this weekend, thank goodness. So uh, we should have a pleasant and uh, dry weekend. Uh, we are going to visit all the different sites, but I know throughout the weekend that some of you would like to visit different things, so you might be dipping in and out. So if you just let me know once more when you'll be coming and joining us throughout. We want you to make the most of your stay here in North Staffordshire. Um, and then I'd also like to introduce you, most importantly, to your fantastic guest speaker for the weekend, Father Michael Fisher, who will actually be leading your guided architectural tours of the buildings. A uh, couple of other things. We are under our own steam, so we can be flexible with the program. It is us, so if you want to stay a little longer or a little shorter anywhere, then just let me know. And then this evening, the cloud of mystery, as it were, now, Damien and I have been working quite hard on, on the programme. Um, I'm actually going to a tapas restaurant in the High Street this evening. Anybody that would like to join me, if you could let me know by lunchtime so that I can confirm table numbers. Other than that, there are plenty of good eateries in and around, and I know that not all of you are staying in Cheadle. If anybody needs any help with transport, also to let me know, and I can give you some taxi numbers and other details. So, I shall hand you over to Michael for this weekend's guided tours. Well, thank you, Hannah, and uh, welcome to Puget Land, which was Professor Pevsner's uh, uh, title for Cheadle and surrounding district. Uh, I should get out of the way because uh, uh, he's what it's all about. There's, there's Augustus Welby Puget. Uh, it's a replica of the Sumo Energy from Ramsgate. It was made specially for the V&A exhibition in 1994, and uh, it, it now he now lives normally at Alton Towers, but they didn't know quite what to do with him. Anyway, there he is in his safe, but that's what, that's, that's what it's all about. And what you're seeing here in the center is, in some ways, the aftermath of Fugin. See, Fugin died in 1852, the age of 40. Um, he had no architectural practice as such. His only pupil, apart from his son Edward, was John Harvin Powell, who married uh, Pugin's daughter. And so the tradition continued largely through Powell and through the firm of John Harvin and Company, whose works are all around here. And what you can see is how uh, Hardman's took up uh, the cause from Pugin's time. There are some things that date actually from Pugin. The, the tall Paschal candlestick, by the way, uh, is, is, uh, is Pugin. It came into the Harden collection, believe it or not. It was spotted in a hotel foyer in London. It was being used as a flower stone. And the custodian of the Harden collection brought it, brought it up to Birmingham. So you're going from that to lots of other things uh, that continue the Pugin style right through into the 20th century. And the pictures on the wall here, um, the uh, one, two, three, four, including the photograph, are of St. Gregory's Church in Longton, uh, soap on Trent, no longer there, it had to be demolished because of mining subsidence. Uh, but it was designed by Pugin's son Edward um, in uh, the 1860s and was redecorated by Hardman's in about 1903-1905. And those are the drawings for the decorative scheme that was applied, and it's all wholly in the style of Fugin. And so he was still being uh, drawn upon, as it were, long after his death. In the frame pictures over on the wall there, you've got some patterns for stained glass. You've also got, in the left-hand frame, uh, designs for metalwork by John Harden Powell, part of the extensive collection. 